Hey YouTube, how do I study the Bible? Studying the Bible is simple, and I'll show you how in five minutes or less. Hi, my name is Janelle Dietrich, and today we are going to use CPR to revive your spiritual life. After spending some time in prayer, start out by selecting a verse, passage, or story you want to learn about. Once you know what you want to study, start out with C. C stands for content slash context. In this step, we're answering the question, what does this say? Here are three simple tools to help you answer this question. Tool one, looking up definitions. If you don't know what a word means, don't be afraid to look it up. You can either use a dictionary, or the internet has helpful resources to even look up the definitions in the Bible's original language. The second tool is using references. The Bible explains itself. Sometimes the explanation isn't within the same verse or chapter, but comparing scripture with scripture will help you to understand it. You can use the margins in the Bible to find the cross-references. There are also online resources to help you find references as well. Our third tool is asking questions that only the verse can answer. This tool is extremely simple. I'll give an example in a bit. After finishing C, asking what does this say, we move on to P, paraphrase. Paraphrase answers the question, what does this mean to me? Think upon the thought of the text until it becomes your own. I like to think of it as God talking just to me. Next is R, response. Response answers the question, why does it matter? This is where I reflect upon what I've been going through lately. What did I just tell God in my opening prayer? While the paraphrase is God speaking to me, this is where I like to respond back to God. Let's do an example with Jesus calming the sea, starting with Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Then they came to the other side of the sea. Let's understand what this says with CPR. What does the word care mean? The dictionary defines care as feel concern or interest, attach importance to something. Let's now look up the references for peace be still. Psalm 65 verse 7 says, You who still the noise of the seas, the noise of the waves, and the tumult of the people. Now for the questions. What did Jesus tell the disciples they were going to do? What happened as they were crossing? Where was Jesus when all this happened? How did the disciples react to the storm? What did the disciples tell Jesus when they woke him up? What did Jesus do in response? Where did they go? After you answer these questions, paraphrase it as if God was speaking just to you. Here's an example. In the evening, I told the disciples they were going to cross over to the other side. We got in the boats and departed out to sea. While we were sailing, a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat and began filling it with water. From the perspective of the disciples, it looked like we were going to perish. They thought that they weren't important to me, and they accused me of not caring for them. Instead of telling them that I cared for them, I showed them. I rose up, I rebuked the wind and calmed the sea. Only then did I turn to the disciples and ask them why they were so fearful. I asked them this question because I already told them that we would get to the other side. Now it's time to respond, and I want you to think, what does this story mean to you, and why does it matter? Maybe you feel like God calls you to do something, but things aren't going the way you hoped. Maybe you feel like you're in the middle of a storm, and from your perspective, it feels like God doesn't care. If you feel this way, I want you to keep this in mind. Just as Jesus proved to the disciples that he cared for them, he will prove to you how precious you are to him. Also. Jesus never promised there wouldn't be storms, but he promises to always get you through it and he'll be there with you in the storm.